June 17, 2010, I was in Tulsa County Jail there, and I had a dream uh, that I was standing in this green pasture, and each blade of grass is the size of my pinky finger up to my knees, just beautiful greens as far as your eye can see, like you could just hug this grass, it's so alive. My mom is standing to my right, and before us both hanging in midair is an exquisitely hand-carved wooden frame, and it's a painting of these seven high hills represented the seven years of tribulation. As I'm looking at this painting, I see this guy on a white horse come trotting into the bottom left-hand corner, and he stops in the bottom left-hand corner not far in, and my vision zooms in on him so I see him up close. Then I see another guy on a white horse go across the sky. He stops in the center of the painting atop the highest green hill, and the bottom of his robe is dipped in blood. Not the whole robe, he tread at the wine press, wine press of the fierceness and wrath of God. Just the bottom of his robe, white horse, white robe, just the bottom of his robe was in blood. Really stood out. My mom pointed to, to Jesus on that second horse there. She said to me, I've been having dreams about that guy. I looked. I said, I have too. As soon as I said that, I turned to my left and I saw Jesus eye to eye, face to face. He didn't say one word to him, but that smile across his face still speaks to me every time I think about it. I'm no better than any man or woman out there, and he smiled at me ear to ear. I turned back to the right, and I saw the right hand and arm of God the Father rise in between my mom and I and above us like this. He had on a white cloak up to here, and a sparkle like lightning up and down his arm. I think it's as Jeremiah 30, 30 says he will shoot forth the lightning of his arm. He pointed to Jesus as that white horse, and he said to me with this thunderous voice from behind. The Bible calls his voice as the multitude of waters, because with each word that proceeded out of his mouth, you could actually see and feel the air around you ripple like waves of power through you and around you. He pointed to Jesus and he said to me, Did you know that guy was a slave in his own land? Boom, everything flashed bright white. I woke up from that dream on that top rack and my, my eyes were wide open, but my tongue was not under my control. I was saying, Halaya, 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 over and over again. My tongue was booking it and I was taking a deep breath in while it was still coming out. I don't know how that works, but God does. But anyways, I looked it up and in Hebrew, Hala is praise and Yah is the sacred name of God. Like hallelujah is praise ye the Lord. Hala Yah is praise the Lord. Anyways, who he showed me that first white horse it talks about in Revelation 6, 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb, Jesus, opened one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And as seven seals being opened, it's the only one that says he heard a noise of thunder. That's because Barak in Hebrew means thunderbolt or lightning. That's who he showed me on the first white horse. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. I told a guy about later about this dream when I was in Oklahoma County, each other, moving me around. And he brought me this magazine the next day. It says, The reality of hope, mark of the beast everywhere, changes in order. But if elected, what could Barack Obama really do? But that's who God showed me that first white horse months before I saw this. There's the crown it says is given to him, a crown. Jesus comes in Revelation 19 has many crowns upon his forehead. This guy has one crown, the crown of the presidency. A crown. Behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. This word bow is only found in the scriptures one time. It says apparently as the simplest fabric and in the strongest concordance. The simplest fabric that makes up all matter is called the Higgs boson. And they found it was July, 4th of July, 2012. They come out for sure saying they had found it. They talk about what all they're going to do with it. But what did they do the last time they smashed atoms together? They got the nuclear bomb. What are they going to have this time? The bomb that's going to make the nuclear bomb look like child's play. But anyways, no weapon formed against us should prosper. It'll all be turned back around against them, but his real name is Barry Santoros or something like that. He had his name changed to Barack Hussein Obama. Barack means thunderbolt, lightning. It's also a verb meaning to bless, kneel, salute, or greet. The verb derives from the noun knee and perhaps suggests the bending of the knee and blessing. Talking about bending the knee, blessing, blessing him, bowing to him. And then Hussein, which means handsome or beautiful in Arabic. And then you got Bama in Hebrew, not Obama, but Bama means on the high hills. So what his name is really saying is bow to or worship Hussein on the high hills or capital hill. Bow to him. That's all they're doing. The Bible calls him a man of lies. There's a few of the many lies he's been speaking. His nose is bigger than mine. Anyways, the Bible talks about a, uh, a war against the great harlot. Taking away our liberties. There's 
been a war going on against the great harlot. Don't bother me now. My Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And there's not the spirit of the Lord in all this. I like this one out of uh, National Geographic. It was saying Obama is not the Antichrist, but I cut out the not. Obama is the Antichrist. The Bible says that he comes forth conquering and to conquer. There he is on Newsweek, dressed up like Napoleon, conquering. He's conquering the world. I really hope he appreciates his testimony. I pray for him all the time. I pray according to scripture. But, uh, there he is. If this isn't blasphemy, I don't know what is. If you're Muslim, he's what they call the, the Mahadi, the divinely guided one, an Islamic eschatology, a messianic deliverer who will fill the earth with justice and equity, restore true religion, and usher in a short golden age lasting seven, eight, or nine years before the end of the world. They say their last seven, eight, nine years is going to be a golden age. We know it is a tribulation. We're starting to feel it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52 says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We should not all sleep, but we should all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised. Clearly says twice at the last trump. People, we're going through it. He's with us. Though we go through the waters, he's with us. Through, through the fire, he's with us. He never left us. But you see these words, he's, he's coming to restore justice and equity, true religion. He just had his 2015 State of the Union. We're going to make it all equal, justice. You know. All this, uh, All this free stuff, free cell phones, all this stuff, we know it's nothing more than GPS tracking devices. You know, they're, they're keeping tracks on us. The NDAA allows the government its military to whisk a citizen away with no reason other than being suspected of terrorism and without any appearance before a court. They have it all set up. We know about the FEMA camps. We know what's, what's about to happen. There's going to be a Holocaust, probably worse than Hitler ever thought to be. But God is going to raise up a mighty army out of the midst of a bunch of nobodies, from the homeless, from the prisoners, from, from a bunch of nobodies. He's got an army. I've seen him. And uh, the good things that he has that no preacher will tell you about it, it talks about it. Jesus talks about it in Matthew 24, 20. He says, pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. There's a flight that's coming up. Revelation 18, 4 says, talking about the fall of Babylon, the fall of America. 18.4 says, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. That word come out is where you get the Greek word exodus. Ek is the road, road out of exodus. There is a great exodus in these last days that's about to happen. Greater than Moses ever thought to see. We're going to see greater things. These things and greater.